It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sports. Wilson, le ballon officiel de U Sports. Official U Sports basketball. Et par Green Shield Canada, fier partenaire en titre du 8 ultime Green Shield U Sports 2024. And by Green Shield Canada, proud pedal partner of the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight. Welcome back here to St. Paul, Quebec, as we get ready for the bronze medal game between Dalhousie and Ottawa University. Greg Campbell, Mocon here on this snowy Sunday afternoon. All right, Greg, um, both these teams were looking for gold. That won't be the case. Now they get to go home with medal around their necks, which is bronze has the most playoff for both teams after some tough losses. Well, I mean, for both teams, it's not how you start games. It's how you finish at the end of the day, especially how you end halves and the fourth quarter and for both teams that was their dismay at the end of the day their ultimate pinfall Brock gets outscored or sorry the GG's get outscored by 13 in the second quarter against the rivals of the Queen Gales who advanced to the championship and then on the other side the Dalhousie Tigers who played well in the first three quarters two things plagued them at the end of that game outscored 24 9 15 point margin there in the fourth quarter and then they lost the rebounding battle big time in a 21 to 9 category, 21 to 5 category. My apologies. Well, we'll find out next coming up here. It's Ottawa, it's Dalhousie. Winner will get the bronze medal. Ottawa did lose the same effects. They to go one and one against AUS competition. Will it happen? Stay tuned here for the 2024 U Sports Men's National Final Eight from St. Paul, Quebec on CBC Sports. Feel every hit, point, and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. 
They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back here to St. Paul, Quebec. Up next is the player introductions for Dal in Ottawa, presented by Marc Antoine Garabi. Stay tuned for this. C'est la présentation des alignements de départ des deux équipes. D'abord du côté des GGs d'Ottawa. And now, please welcome the starting lineups for both team. Starting with Ottawa, le numéro 2, number 2, Kevin Autou. Le numéro 5, number 5, Dragon Saic. Le numéro 10, number 10, Justin Jock Tajor. Le numéro 11, number 11, Brock Newton. Et le numéro 35, and number 35, J.M. Gameta. L'entraîneur-chef de head coach, James Deroyne. Et maintenant, voici la ligue partant du côté des Tigers. And now, the starting lineup for Delousy. Le numéro 4, number 4, Spencer Rigar. Le numéro 6, number 6, Malcolm Christie. Le numéro 7, number 7, Neganu Negala. Le numéro 10, number 10, Samuel Mayer. Et le numéro 11, et number 11, Jaden Parker. L'entraîneur-chef des Tigers, head coach Rick Plato. Welcome back here. It is going to be ability and imagination with these two teams coming off tough losses yesterday. Queens taking out Ottawa and Laval pulling off the win late against Dalhousie. And the emotional check now with less than 24 hours to uh, think about what happened is now on display here. How will this game play out, especially the first few minutes of play? Are we going to get a good idea, a barometer of how these teams might be invested or maybe kind of checked out at this point? Well, it's going to be the opposing styles offensively and defensively. I mean, the Tigers, especially with Nagala and Krusty, love to go downhill when they have the opportunity. That is where the GG struggled yesterday against the Queens Golden Gales. If they can get you stunted into the half court, they're okay in most cases. And the youth of the Tigers, I mean, they played fine until that fourth quarter, and then that inexperience showed with no seniors. Now looking to go 2 0 against OUA competition. They ripped apart Brock on Friday, and now looking to get themselves a medal going back to the East Coast on Monday morning. And here's O2 with it. And Jock Jory watched by Parker. Two bigs going at it right off the bat. The three, nylon for O2, and they're off and running. That's a good start to, for that team. at 31% in yesterday's loss in that situation, and they went 11 of 26, but good start by O2, who's not known as the premier scorer for this team. And here's Maillet with them. And the jumper from Mangala, miss, rebound Ottawa, and here they come back off and running. It is Newton, and he loses the moment, and now Parker recovers. Ottawa scoring about 79 points per game. Dal at 80 points a game, so they're almost identical in points four. So it could very well come down to the last shot here for the bronze medal. Back door, Christie. That's their DNA, and that's their post to go. And that's a guy you do not want to lose track of in the half quarter in any matter for anywhere on the court. He's had 25 in the loss yesterday. The three lacking the effectiveness coming from Gamata, and now it goes back to Dow, who has a chance to get themselves their first lead of the day. Maillet against Gamata, and that will go out of bounds as Gamata really 
had a solid effort against Queens, but again, this Queens team, they had a 20 to 23 to 5 run late in the first half, and that blew away Ottawa in this matchup. And for a game in which you thought it was going to be coming down to the last possession, one point separated the tie each time those two teams first played each other. Like you said, that second quarter went a long way in determining the pace. And they, you know, they spent so much energy trying to get back into that game, and they just ran out of steam at the end. Here is Ingenio and Gala. Unfortunately for Dow, they ran out of steam in the fourth quarter. It was neck and neck with Laval until the final four minutes when Laval pulled away and never looked back. And now it's Laval against Queens in the gold medal game. And that goes out of bounds. Gamata was the last one to touch it. It will be Dow on possession with Maye on the side outs. And a 24-9 fourth quarter run for the Rouge or books their spot in the national championship. But it was the size they used against Dow on the inside that really gave him fits in the second half. Christie cannot give them a fit. We are with the rebound and that is taken away by Stajic and now here he comes the other way. This is a team that has had success and now from the center arc right down Bank Street and Jock DeJore with the three and they're back up by a score 6-2. He had 6.6 .6 rebounds didn't attempt a three-point shot yesterday but another turnover here Stajic at the helm. And now transition 0-2 splash a uh, triple, 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 and now they're up by a score of seven. Uh, that's a turkey, we call it in bowling, right, partner? But the three-point shot, getting it to go. Stajak active defensively, I mean, he had two steals yesterday. He's up, he'll probably be amongst the potential all-stars. And Gala comes back with a silencer, and now they're down by four. And the Gala had a tough matchup with Stevie Joseph yesterday in that semifinal, even though he went off for 16, six rebounds and four assists. He was hounded all night on the perimeter. And Newton hounding the points in, and now they're back up again, 11-5. Well, Nagala does such a good job of boxing out Stajic to not allow him to get the ball that he gives a free path to the GGs to the net. We are. And a giveaway again by the Tigers. They hit about 14 and a half per game this season, which was number 17 in the nation. And it goes back over, 0-2 on the interplay. Newton, and now they're back up 13-5. Uh, coach Buckley of Ottawa, the assistant coach, he said, we're relaxed, we're ready, we're locked in. Uh, we have to forget about what happened yesterday, and you can see they're off to a great flyer so far. Well, they'll punish you on the turnover game. They forced 16 yesterday to the tune of 24 points. So, again, actively amongst the tops in Canada the last four years in terms of turnover percentage. And Gala missing that jumper. Rebound by eight, and now new 14. Christie is impeded, he is fouled, and he will get three shots coming up here. 0-2 is the one convicted for that foul, and now going to the line for three free throws. Yeah, late close there by the lean scorer in this game right now, who's single-handedly outscoring the Tigers at this point as he's made both three-pointers. Newton's got four, Tajor's got three of his own. Christie, and a couple of clanks here and there, and it goes in. Him and Nagala, the two focal points offensively for this Tigers team and the AUS champs. They've both got three apiece here early on, combined two of five from the field. You wonder if mental fatigue could be a factor uh, for these teams because, again, third game in, third, in three days. Uh, but, again, the emotional charge of being in a semifinal game, which came down for Dow to the Final Four and for Ottawa, it was still competitive. But the exertion of energy, how will they be? Will they be able to get themselves one more in before potentially winning the bronze medal? Well, you see that offseason conditioning coming into play here as an almost strip there in the second half, we'll call it, because Ottawa... In the earlier semifinal, got a couple of extra hours to rest their legs and also watch that matchup. And now it is coming through, and the teardrop from Steig is incomplete, rebounded by the Gigi's new 14. Newton in the paint to the left, denied by Riar, and back out to Ngala as he pushes the pace up to Parker and gets Njok Tajori, and he's not going to be fouled. He thought he was, and we go back to the way. They're following the script, though, of what Queens did to the GGs yesterday, which is attack and transition and downhill in a hurry. Intercepted by Ngala. Read that like a DB out there. And now Dow to calm the Ottawa Waters down as they're down by five as we approach 5.30 left in this first quarter play. Fast moving action here in this bronze medal game. Here we are. Christie's a rather protracted to Maye, who had a quiet effort of points, and now is Ngala. Nylon! Two triples in the first quarter, they're down by two. And they started that in the first half of the wing, and then he was just waiting, waiting, waiting for that backside screen. He makes a pay, tipped ball by Christie, GG's second possession. See the first substitutions by both sides. Yeah, they have to get the scoreboard correct. In fact, that is incorrect. It's not 15-8 for Ottawa. 
I uh, should be 13 11 for the Gigi's so the scoreboard is incorrect and uh, now they listen to me finally and now they'll get this corrected but it was it a two was it a three I thought it was a three and it appears now only a two both sides efficient shooting so far the GG 63 percent 43 percent for the Tigers three of four are the GG's two from the land beyond so far blistering start from that market they only shoot 27 percent there on the year Stike, that goes off of Riyard, back out of Cubs, and here's DeMay, who had a wonderful second quarter of action that kept Dalhousie with some clutch shots when and Galleran took a bit of a bump along the road when he was on the bench. And now here's a guy against his former teammate, Khalif Akulamala, at Vanier College. They know each other very well from the free throw line. That is a miss, rebound off the shot of Stewart, and here come the Stike-led GGs. Newton in, and that is now Cole Newton for the GGs. The action always start with Newton on the block there as he misses the first. The cleanup and the finish courtesy of uh, Sid. I was trying to pass his name all weekend long here. I'm going to see it now. Ruhami Endu Dekwe. Well done, partner. I was practicing with the Ottawa people about that, and I was trying to get this figured out. I thought he would come in on Friday, and then he wasn't there, and then Saturday he wasn't there, and now Sunday he arrives. And he gets his first two points. And Christie has been familiar with the Nets. And he gets another three. And they're down by two. And our three-point shot around the wing again. And he's a catch-and-shoot kind of guy. Clips at 36% from the land beyond 22 points a game, second in the AUS. Newton off the window. And now they're back up four. And that's the other one that I want to get going. I mean, Brock gets the attention in junior, but brother Cole is pretty good. He, even though he has 3.3 points per game, they want to see him attack the rim. DeMay, the future, missing that one. Stayek with the rebound. The Waterloo, Ontario native. Up ahead, Newton from Fergus, Ontario. Extra pass. And coming in the paint, stopping, looking, popping. In for two, courtesy of Cole Newton. And now they're up by six. He's got back-to-back -back baskets and different feel in the late stages of this first quarter. A six-point lead for the GGs. Dal in Ottawa going at it right now. The fourth seed against the sixth seed in this tournament. What's going on with the medal? And right now it is in Gala on possession for three. Missing that one. And the forensic touch, courtesy of Caleb Stewart coming through. And now they're down by four. Nice little volleyball tip, two hand with the fingers extended as Stayek tries to go back to work. Newton from the 45. Too strong. Rebound, Stayek. Magnus in his hands. And now against DeMay. And the finish there. And now they're up by score 21 15. That's a Strong take on the inside by the senior there that averages 7.8 points per game, but 5.8 rebounds, 5.9 assists. He does a little bit of everything for this GG squad. Gallagher for the cutter, switch of play. We are against Newton and a whistle and a foul with 2.21 left in this first quarter of play. So they'll say it's before the shot here. They'll say an extension. So you see the substitutions coming. For both sides, and we'll get our first uh, formal media timeout. Timeout call on the court. 21-15 lead for Ottawa over Dal. You're watching the 2024 Gold Shield U Sports Final 8 presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Stay tuned for more action. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy is headed to the campus of the University of Saskatchewan for the first time March 14th to 17th. Single game tickets start at $10 for children, $22 for adults, 
click the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit usas.com, usas.universitytickets.com to order your tickets today. The 2024 Green for Life U Sports Women's Hockey Championship in Saskatoon. Chase the glory. And right now here at the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final 8 presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC, we have an ultra lead for Ottawa up by six. Uh, he's just been going to work in the transition game, a couple of three-pointers, and then Cole Newton starting to work here, even though Brock's their leading scorer. And the three from Christie, and now they're down by three with 2.08 left in the first quarter. I mean, that's ballsy, stares him down, and then just a nice jab at the end of the day and gets it to go. Clever player that he is, Malcolm Christie. And here's Njok Tajori, the future of the Gigi's from the corner pocket. That is off the iron, rebounded by Lydell Husbands-Brown, and here comes the Halifax native back the other way. Dow trying to get themselves on even footing with Ottawa down by three. Christie. And they'll switch everything defensively, this GG squad. Reed, the Alberta native, cannot hit that one. Rebounded by the Abdallah hands, and now here come the GGs the other way. Christie leads all scores with 11 right now, three of four from the field, including a pair of tray bombs. Newton does not come up with a bomb of finish, and it goes back to Dow, and here they are with 120 left in this first quarter play. Reed trying to get around one. And now Abdallah on him. And here is Christie and Jock Tajori on him. Ten left on the shot clock from Andy Ganesh. Splash and the foul. I mean, I like the shimmy shake celebration at the end of that. And why not for the young man there? I mean, he had 25 yesterday. And the opening contest in which they blew out Brock as well. I mean, he torched the Badgers. And... Similar to that of Diego Mafia, he's just an elite scorer. I mean, look at the space here. Defers the screen, jabs, and then even with the hand in the uh, arm pocket there, he says sinks it and a little shake at the end. And now it is Christie at the line. And a roll. And now they're up by one. And blink of an eye. It's been easy in the eye. And these Dow players have been very tigerish coming back in this game, down by as much as six. And it is Ottawa in the trail with 55 ticks left in this first quarter. And Jock Tajore is fouled. Going high in the air was Caleb Stewart. And, and Jock Tajore will go to the line for free throws. That's, that's the one thing that, I mean, the GGs didn't get to the line a lot yesterday in their semifinal loss. They were efficient at 91%, 10 of 11. But look at the other side. They allowed a 25 free throws by the Golden Gales. They just got downhill quick in a hurry and now to make it a perhaps one point lead for the ggs he missed that one rebound right to the tigers and we have christy on the controls read to his left and here he is from calgary alberta watched by abdallah and now going towards the rim cool all cuts him off parker now going steward that is going out for the jumper and that lacked the finish required it goes back over to ottawa oh, they'll still get a chance with the shot clock differential because of where they took that shot newton back out cool and that's repelled by reed he read that and now adal can play for the last shot christy in airborne mode and they slow it down with 14 seconds left on the game clock. So now it's creative time in this high pick and roll. What will he do with it? He'll accept it initially on the switch off. Christy for three. Missing that. Kulamala couldn't get to that. And at the end of the first quarter, it is Dow 22, Ottawa 22. We're through one with three quarters to go. Stay tuned here. This is the 2024 U Sports Final Eight by Green Shield, presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC and on CBC Sports. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you.
Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship is headed to the campus of McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario on March 15th to 17th. Tournament packages and single gift tickets are on sale now. Click the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit marauders.ca slash tickets to order your tickets today. The 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship in Hamilton, Ontario. Chase the glory and right now after the one quarter play, uh, who's got the glory of momentum right now? Momentum, I would say, it was the GG's pace here, even though a couple of threes by Chrissy might alter things in a blink of an eye. But just kind of a preview outside of our championships here. You look at the women's category, Queens of Laval will kick it off at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for the bronze medal match. And then the Carlton Ravens, who have been at the top for a little bit in the women's game here as well, will take on the Saskatchewan Huskies. Well, right now, uh, we're not in uh, kill shot range yet for this game to be over. It's still plenty of Darren Jeopardy with this being that 22 apiece. We have three quarters left. We're underway here. Andre Reed back over. It comes to the Dow Tigers. They're always looking for Christie for a sale flash there, and they'll probably set him up on the wing here shortly. Christie with it again. Abdullah on him. Six on six. The three and the foul, and Abdullah will be called for that. And uh, he gives a quizzical look to Abdallah on that defending. Well, it's ring around the rosy here with these two, and he's just sizing him up, waiting for the contact, and then he gets him on the back side, and then he just flails up the shot there. You'll notice before each free throw, they'll do like a little shoulder shake as well before going into shooting motion. And the motion looks flawless, and that will give them a one-point lead for Dow. Uh, they've been chasing this game for most of it, and now they have that uh, temporary lead of one with 940 left in this first half. The free throw discrepancy, not large at this point, but you can see the difference in terms of attacking style. The Tigers were 5-of-5 five five now, and Christie's going to make probably all three in this case, first one of two for the GGs. And uh, there's the I announcer's wrong. I believe you're wrong on that one there. You can do a mic drop if you want. And right now, Christie won't be happy with either, Greg. And with it is Ottawa. They're down by two. Not happy with the current scoreline. Gimena with it against Christie. In traffic, open side for three. Nylon. They're back up one. And now with nine points left in this first half. Their fourth three-pointer, 50% for the Lambiot. And just the attention drawn in on the inside. And Stiak just one fluid motion despite the extra time to think about it. Back door, Christie. He's a poacher from that position, and now he got himself into two points. If you think he's going to shoot on the wing and you fall asleep for a second, he'll slip back door on you for two just like that. And like that, they are back up 0-2 with the two-point converts. Great game so far for him. Eight points now and three of three from the field, but Christie on the other side lighting it up. Stiak taking that away from Lydell Husbands Brown, and now he's on the gallop on his bike, trailing through Abdallah. 0-2, slowing it down, looking to get into 10-point range for the first time today. First and steals for a reason, a foul on the floor there, averaging 11 on the year. So, I mean, elite defensively in that category. Points allowed for game 67, that's first in OUA, and even opposition field goal numbers at 39%, that's top three. Time out call, 838 left in this first half. Ottawa 27, Dalhousie 26. You're watching the 2024 U Sports. Men's National Championship, courtesy Green Shield, presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Feel every hit, goal, and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. 
Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 U Sports Men's Hockey Championship returns to Toronto for the first time in a quarter of a century on March 14th to 17th at the Matinee Home Ice, located within the walls of the historic Maple Leaf Gardens. Single game tickets start at $23. Click on the QR code on your screen and visit tech, ticketmaster.ca to get order your tickets. The 2024 University Cup, hosted by Toronto Metropolitan University, Chase the Glory, and right now, in the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final presented by Michelob Light. Um, it is Ottawa up by one on possession. Gameta in, and that ball was sent towards the end line. And this will be Ottawa possession. Oh, well, he's going to get called on the foul there, are the Tigers, as he squeezed between two defenders, and they'll show the pocket corner and protect the middle of the paint here. Back up Stajic, and Gameta went off his chest, and he gets it back in time. Ten left on the shot clock. Stajic against Angala. And Stajic almost put Angala on ice, and now the three is not serene, and rebounded by Maye, and here come the Tigers down by one. That's a matchup you want to see on both sides of the court. Both elite guards, both aggressive, both very defensively tenacious to say the least. Christy is fouled and now for the third time today will go to the line for three shots and uh, he's been really doing a great job getting the angle approach and putting Ottawa at a disadvantage but trying to track him down. Well if you're going to switch you better switch fast in this case because like you said it's the third time heading to the line now as Newton's going to check into the game but you have to know he's a catch and shoot kind of player and now he's burned them on all three sides of the court, right in the middle and on both wings for three-point shots in terms of which they failed, but he goes back to the strike. Well, this is one for one, unlike his last trip, uh, where you thought he'd be three for three. I mean, and to be fair, it was his, the first miss for the team all afternoon. Eight of nine now. And I won't say anything on this third one this time. I didn't say anything. He, he can be angry at you all he, all he wants for him missing that free throw last time. I mean, you really think he's going to listen back to the broadcast? Well, maybe for, not for, him. That, for that call. Maybe the Dow fans might do so. And uh, don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> I mean, he's a 90% free throw shooter. He's first in the AUS. It's, it's an assumption that the numbers usually work out in his favor. And right now, Dow is up by two. And here is O2. Reload from the 45. And that rims out. Rebound Christie. And Gengala back in the game. 7.36 left in this first half. Transition three. And that will clank double. And now recovered by the GGs. And here they come with Newton the other way. Uh, they got to account for Newton. It's a late exchange there in terms of recognition. From the corner pocket. And Stike with the rebound off the 0-2 miss. And you get a new 14. Him and the Gal, a lot of handwork on the inside. And Stike trying to use his lower hips against Ngala. The twist, the turn, and he had him encircled. He got himself two. We're back to 49 piece. Yeah, he twisted in the GG's bench shouts at the end of the day there. Just good footwork, and he knew where he wanted to go with that. And then three the other way. Splash! Maye, he was quiet, but he got himself that three. Big shot for him as they now get the lead back up by three. By three-pointers in this first half. Nine makes the average on the year. And Jock Tajori, we are going shot for shot here. 32 31 lead, 640 left in this first half. And then Gala now with the watch by Newton. Here comes Stewart. And then Gala calmly against Newton in the paint. And Gala high off the back heel, put back, no good. Rebound and a foul and a whistle. And Parker will go to the line, scoring by 11 a game. And you can just see that he's got that ability to really change the game with his length on the court. Well, Parker had seven in yesterday's loss, but I mean, the offensive boards are something that they really couldn't corral in that matchup last night in which they got out-rebounded by 15, 41, 26. And that's because of the length, both vertically and horizontally with the wingspan for the two bigs in the Laval Rouge et Or. So the second chances weren't coming very often. In now, fact, they were credited with zero. Sorry about that, partner. And now uh, Park gets the first free throw. And right now, you can see that these teams are neck and neck, almost identical in terms of what they are, in terms of the encore play. But again, we look at the uh, domestic play for both teams. Ottawa, Ottawa went 19-3 in OUA. Dow went 11-9 in the AOS. But Rick Plato had a, had a line 
uh, earlier in the season, in his pregame preseason notes, he believed this was a team that would be top five in the country. And he challenged Engineering Gala to be the man for this team. And here they are fighting for a bra. So not for the goal, but they definitely met most of their goals in terms of what they wanted to be this season. Well, and until that fourth quarter collapses, Noonan goes back to line after forcing his way between a couple defenders there. I mean, the, the youth and the inexperiences for some teams is a, is a downgrade. But, you know, talking to Rick Plato, his 11th season at the helm, a four-time coach of the year for the AUS, he's saying it was all about the experience coming into this weekend. And he said in that semifinal matchup before they lost is if we lost to a better team, it is what it is. But these guys are certainly going to build on it. And you can see they've got a lot of moxie and a lot of poise. And they weathered the storm for three quarters yesterday. They dealt with the crowd noise very well. And, and, and look, you have felt it, Dow felt it. We'll see how Queens will uh, encounter it against Laval tonight with the home crowd. Here's Parker with it. Maya hit a three last time around. Now trying to dance around Newton from the corner block. Comes to Reed. DeMay. We are. Good ball movement by Dow from the 45. Most short on that. And Maya will give it back to Parker, new 14. Good job following up his miss there from the wing, crashing. And now DeMay trying to get around Newton. DeMay had eight in the second quarter. Four left in the shot clock. He will launch one, and he will come up short. Reed with the rebound. Kumala will get it back off the ricochet, and here comes Ottawa the other way. It starts with DeMay just looking for Maya the entire time and not being assertive in the half court there. He spent about four or five seconds trying to find a man as it goes off the freshman's foot last. Timeout call on the court, 524 left in this first half. 33-32 lead for Dalhousie over Ottawa. And you are watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final 8 presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Stay tuned for more action from St. Paul, Quebec. Well, it is Gold Medal Sunday here in Alberta. And don't forget, we tip it off on CBC Sports, which is home of University Sports, as we present the Gold Medal game of the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Men's Basketball Final 8 tonight at 6 p.m. East. Catch all the action from Quebec City only CBC, on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. The Gold Medal game at 6 p.m. tonight. And now it is Ottawa up by one over Dalhousie. Well, the question is, does Cinderella get her glass slipper in the color of gold at the end of the day for the Rouge or? Five to go. Here's my A. Parker from 17. Front rim. My A with a new 14 for Dow. And Kulamala with the quick hands. My A in chase. And he denies Kulamala at the window. A standing defensive effort both sides there. DeMay. My A. Back door, Parker up and over, acrobatic and emphatic, and they're back up one. Good job there, and it's been an interesting back and forth affair here. Stajek, like a skier through Mont Saint Anne, coming up with two. They're tied after the first cue, and a one point differential between the two here in the second quarter. Back door, and that is pushed away by Te and Jock Tajori. Yeah, he just stepped in front of it, batted it with authority as he's got the outlet here trying to find someone. Reed is slow coming back. He might have landed awkwardly on his left foot. And Jock Tajori against Parker from 17. And that is off the mark. Rebound, tripped up. Right back to Jock Tajori. The reload, no good. And the putback, not there. Rebounded by Maye. 404 left. And now up to Parker. And in Jock Tajori will be called for the foul and the harm. Well, you didn't think that was going to go in, but it finds its way into the cup somehow. And this is what Maia does in transition. He's a playmaker, sees this man on the inside track to the lane, and then goes up for the cram, and he gets stuffed by the uh, 
rim initially, but then upwards trajectory gets a friendly roll and goes to the line for one. He got the uh, he got the finish on that play. That's all that matters at the end of the day. But free throw discrepancy. I said it wasn't a huge thing earlier on, but right now they're out shooting them three to one. A the miss there, 10 of 13 versus 2 of 4. Now Stajak back with it as he will bring it back up court. Stajak going from one end to the other end. Stajak whipping that pass. Newton, soft touch, and now they're back up once. And if you haven't seen this guy play before, Stajak a lot like Gordon Dragic in the NBA. I mean, 48 steals, that's fourth in the year. 5.8 rebounds, 5.9 assists, but he could score two when he's asked to do so. My aim. A three and assist. Now it is Christie, the hot hand for the Dow Tigers. Maya still with it from the center arc. Missing that three. Rebounded by Kulamala and with 319 left in this first half. Both sides willing to attack and transition and patient on the other end if they don't get their initial read. Teardrop. No good. Rebound. Newton. And he finds DeMay instead. And now Dow's back on their bikes. DeMay. The finger roll was fancy, but no conclusion. And now we go back the other way. Three on two for Ottawa. Stajak, Euro, Kulamala, short as he got denied by the rim. Christian, our rebound now. He's got three, but it's still a game high 22. Neither side has another player in double figures. Stajak knocking at the door at nine, and Otu at eight, and Tajor at eight. And here's Maye with it, watched by Stajak. Christy, Kulamala on him. The double he draws initially. And that was well off the range. The radar not there for Malcolm Christie. And here is Newton the other way. Stajek from the center arc. Front iron. And we go one way to the other way. And you have to wonder if the gas is starting to run out of the tank for these teams. DeMay. That rims out. Put back. Parker. Timeout call. 39, 38. You're watching the 2024. Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Milko Ultra and CBC Sports. Dallas up one over on Welcome back here as we are running to the final stages of this first half. You have to wonder now, uh, Greg, if maybe at some point with the way this flow is going back and forth that someone's going to run in fumes trying to get this game in their back pocket. Well, they both have been pushing a break breakneck pace to say the least early on in this game and it was a problem for Dal yesterday in terms of the size when they were attacked inside the paint and then the GGs when they were challenged defensively downhill by the Golden Gales, were uh, broken a handful of times. But you see the front here to try and stymie the half court set. O2 opened up the game with a three, and now here he is on possession. Two minutes left in this first half. Newton back out to the other Newton, and Brock Newton got impeded by Riley Stewart. In fact, we have. Um, brother duos here, the Stewart boys and the Newton boys. And right now, Brock's got seven, Cole's got four. And you just want to see that secondary option. It's been Stike leading the way for the GG so far. Newton, now here they come. It is going to be Brock Newton, and that is no good. O2 can't get that. Rebounded by Lydell Husbands-Brown. And here's the made the other way. So we're seeing a very young lineup for the Dow Tigers out there. For Rick Plato wants to give these guys uh, experience because they will be called upon next year. Corner pocket three. Missed by Stewart. Rebounded by O2. They've been settling into a zone the last couple of times here defensively. Transition three. Rims out again. And this will go off of who? And this will be back to Dow. Bit of frustration there. 
by the GGs, but it's just been it's been tight neck from the start as substitutions gonna come both and Newton's gonna be out, Nagala's gonna come in, so the primary ball handler will step back onto the court for Dal. And we'll see them go to that 2-2-1 full court press. So again, if you get it to the wing, you want someone to flash right down the middle or swing that side to side as quickly as possible. And now it is back over to Husbands Brown. They break the press, and we are now in the final 70 seconds of play in this first half. See how high this 2-3 zone sits, though, right now, susceptible to the corner. Stewart. Got the two, and now they're up by three. That's the biggest lead of the day. Good job working the baseline by Riley Stewart on this play for his first basket of the contest. Now we see a zone from Dow. Could Ottawa unlock this zone? Trying to get around is... Ottawa, and now here they come, 0-2, back out it comes, jumper, no, on the bell line they come, and a whistle, and that will stop play as Thomas Armstrong in the game for the first time in this tournament from Ottawa, Ontario. And go to the line because it's a bonus situation, so what they do is they run a 1-2-2 in the half court there, then it sinks into that of a 2-3 once it goes to one of the wings. So Armstrong at the line, no action against Brock in the loss. In the playoffs scored four points in the holiday game against Laval on this very court and has, seen, has not seen much action this regular season for the OUA Ottawa GGs. Neither has this team from the line. They're 10th in terms of percentage at 70, but in terms of makes and attempts, 15th and 16th. And that goes in for Armstrong. 19-17 well, second quarter for the Tigers so far. Two-point lead for the Tigers. Husbands Browns three, splash, and now they're up by five. Both teams playing zone in the late stages here. And you see that ball pressure up top right away, and you can beat that with a pick and roll, and you see Armstrong lurking. And, and got a Bambi on ice, and the three, the putback, 0-2 with the forensic touch. They're down by three. Well, you're not assigned a man in the zone, but you better find someone on the shot block out. And Gallagher comes back with a response, and he misses. And now he gets it back, and that will not count. And at the end of the first half, Dow's up by a score of 44-41 over Ottawa. Stay tuned for second half action, but hold on. The referees are going to call. So he's calling for a jump ball, ball in this situation for a secondary, and so they're going to reset the shot clock. But so we're not done yet officially here. We might have more action. Rick Plato trying to get a, a conversation here, but uh, it appears that we're going to go to the locker room as is. So we go to the locker room, three point lead for Dal over Ottawa. Stay tuned to the 2024 U Sports Men's National Final Eight on CBC Sports. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all.
They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Welcome back here, halftime for the bronze medal game. Ottawa Dalhousie, 44 41 lead for Dal over the Ottawa University GGs. And uh, look at these first half highlights coming up right now and how this played out for both teams. It was end to end action, high octane stuff here. Uh, the adrenaline field was on point. Uh, They're using supreme gas. And you have to wonder, as you see how this played out in this first half, a lot of plethora of threes from both teams. Well, I mean, the two sides combined for 10 three-pointers, six for Dal, four for Ottawa. You talk about that lack of sleep with the clocks moving forward one hour. They could just quicken the pace in this game figuratively and literally at this point as both sides have been content to run tempo in the half court and full transition game. The big difference right now is twofold. One, Ottawa is controlling the glass again, a 26-19 lead. It's something that killed Dow in their matchup last night against the hosts, as you see the court wing three by Nagala there. And on the other side, the free throw discrepancy. Dow's gone to the line seven more times. They're 10 of 13 versus three of six for Ottawa. And the score of the game so far, Malcolm Christie. I mean, he lit it up in the first quarter. He still has a game high 22 through 20 minutes of action. Well. Plenty of intrigue, plenty of drama in this game here. You have to wonder if they can keep up this clip of points in how it played out in the first half between Dallas and Ottawa. The winner will get the bronze medal. The loser will finish in fourth place and uh, head back home either to Halifax or Ottawa with the medal on their necks as we'll find out in the next 20 minutes or so how this will unfold between Dallas and Ottawa from St. Croix, Quebec. Well, don't forget. Every year, U Sports presents a series of major honors to top student athletes in each sport. Here are the nominees and winners of the 2024 U Sports Basketball Community Service Award and the Player of the Year Award for this season. The nominees for the Ken Shields Award for Excellence in Basketball, Academics, and Community Involvement are Les candidats pour le prix Ken Shields pour l'excellence dans le basketball, les études et l'engagement communautaire sont Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Mitchell Mercereau, Cape Breton University, Université du Cap Breton, du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RCQ, Harris Elizabeth, Université Laval University, du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Tazan Graham, Nipissing University, Université de Nipissing, et de l'Association West Canadienne from Canada West, Alexander Dewar, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. Le laureat du prix Ken Shields pour l'engagement communautaire est The winner of the Ken Shields Award for Community Service is Alexander Dewar, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. The nominees for the Mike Moser Memorial Trophy as the U Sports Outstanding Men's Basketball Player of the Year are En nomination pour le trophée commémoratif Mike Moser présenté à l'athlète de l'année U Sport en basketball masculin des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique from the AUS Malcolm Christie, Université Dalhousie University du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec from the RSEQ Kevin Civil, Université du Québec à Montréal, University of Quebec in Montreal Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Callum Baker, University of Toronto, Université de Toronto, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Diego Mafia, University of Victoria, Université de Victoria. Le lauréat du trophée commémoratif décerné aux joueurs de l'année en basketball masculin U Sport est The winner of the Mike Moser Memorial Trophy as the U Sports Player of the Year in men's basketball is Diego Mafia, University of Victoria. Université de Victoria.
They don't do it for the likes, or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Change was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, Chase the glory. Viseo. Welcome back here to halftime. It is Ottawa, it is Dal, and it's a three-point lead for Dal over Ottawa as we get ready for second half action. Look at these first half stats, and uh, Ottawa shot the ball very well, but they're down by three at a 43% clip. Dal at 38%. Three-point shooting, edge towards Dal, 37% compared to the 26%. And right now, the rebounding numbers in favor of Ottawa uh, by seven. So uh, we get ready for second half action here, a quick look towards second half is what in your mind Greg. How do you stop Malcolm Christie if you're the Ottawa GG's? Five of eight from the field, nine and ten from the stripe, three of six from the land beyond. Game high 22 points. Next closest guy knocking on the door is in single figures at Jaden Park in our Parker at seven and then Ottawa someone's got to take the lead scoring wise. I mean Oto's got ten, Stike's got nine, Tajor's got eight, Brock Newton has seven. He's our premier scorer at this point so one or two guys got to take the lead for the GG's and 
Just remain stout in that half court defense and slow down the Tigers transition game. Stay tuned for second half action. We have it up here. Who will win the bronze? Will it be Dow or will it be Ottawa? Find out on CBC Sports. You're home with the 2024 U Sports Men's National Final Eight. Welcome back here as we get ready for third quarter action from St. Foix, Quebec on the University of Laval campus. Uh, final day of action. This is the bronze medal game, the penultimate game before we go to the gold medal game at 6 p.m. East. That we'll have on the CBC Sports platforms across the board. Uh, that will bring to you with uh, Greg Campbell, Mo Khan, and now we get ready for second half action. Dalhousie is up by three. And um, again, we're talking about the frenetic pace up and down the court. They're going at some point. Runners wear out, and you have to wonder if the running will wear these teams out going towards the fourth quarter. Well, the electrolytes they put in your system at half, make sure you roll out any cramps, in some cases salts. Pickle juice was one I got as a player growing up for multiple sports. But talk about this matchup, and then the one later on. Uh, you look at the group chat right now on the YouTube page for this stream in particular, uh, the Dalhousie fans checking into this game. Still upset about that clear path foul and a couple calls down the stretch yesterday in the loss. They're not upset at you, uh, Jinx and Christie, in that free throw attempt? Not yet. All right. We'll find out they do. Uh, right now, one and done for Ottawa on that. And here we go the other way. It is going to be Maillet with it. Final 20 of the seasons here. If not more, we'll find out there is overtime. Parker. That, that in the Schmidt dunk. You just can't let it go, eh? Well, the Schmidt dunk was, you know, it was a poster, right? I mean, it's unfortunate for Schmidt. And, and unfortunately, he got hurt at the end of the game uh, with his hand and uh, did not play the rest of the way. But uh, there were some highlights this year. Alley-oops, dunks, you name it. Big shots from all eight teams this season. Here is Angala missing the big shot. Rebounded by Njok Tajori, and here they come the other way. That's an ask, and now he's going to have to size up Newton in the post. And he was about to size up the rim, but Riyard took that away from him, and he is fouled and will go to the line for two. Just you see the speed again, and they'll call it just off Dal Lasso. They'll go off the baseline. Stiak will inbound, and Newton should get on the inbound if they can't find the initial read. Back out here is Gamena with it, watched by Riar. Or I think Maye, that is. And Jock Jore missing the three. Rebound to Parker. The extra pass, good looking ball movement there, but the three point shot not falling their way. Now for 16 for 25% as a team. My back with it on the swing. Here's the post player we are. Had a tough evening last night, but back out there. Christie, not so much as he's been locked in up by six. Seven three-pointer fourth for him. He's got 25 of the team's 47 so far. The guy's lighting it up, and he's matched his total from the semifinal yesterday already at the start of the second or second half. Stajic from the center arc. Gameta right down King Edward, and now they're back to a three-point gap. 
stones and a good response there by a team that went 11 of 36, 31% from the Lambion in the loss yesterday. And is Maye with it. Trying to work his way back door. Parker is fouled and will go to line for two. That's because of the help there by Oto in that situation as he was driving into the lane. The fifth year senior who got called for it, but we've seen this a couple times where Maye works inside the post and then he just pushes over him and slips back door and gets followed through on the wrist there, but a good slip on the help. Parker missing that free throw attempt. Again, this year a 42% free throw shooter from Milton, Ontario. Almost like a football swim move too to create that separation there on the, before the free throw. And he gets the second one in. They're up by four with 8-10 left in this third quarter play. And they're second. They were one of the better teams percentage-wise coming to this tournament at the line. 73% as a team. Average 16 makes a game. And Jack to Jory. Here is Steik. And Gal on him. Steik. Whipping the pass back out for the center arc. Steik, clean up. Might have been a pass. Might have been a shot. But they got two points out of it. And he left his feet too there in an acrobat finish in the game called Tips. You play growing up and pays off right there. We are back to that 2 3 zone. GG's go from the center arc. We are missing that three. Rebounded by O2. Needs a uh, first shot attempt here of the game. Stolen. Here comes in Gala. Two on one. Maeta is right. Give and go. And Gala stopping, hitting in Dr. Jory in the face. And now this will be out of bounds. Last touch by Gameta. But uh, He's checking for blood there, too. And I'm sure the officials will take a closer look the more times he checks his face in that situation. See the jersey tuck getting called. Wasn't called a lot yesterday. I had to point that out. And we're right on top of that here in the bronze medal. You game. are on top of that uniform check there. And we dial ball side out. I mean, I've officiated before. It's just one of those things you have to do as a player. Well, of course. Even though you hate doing it as a player. Of course. Ten left on the shot clock. Maye. Rebound. Stajic. Long pass. Gameta. Point number five for Gimena in this quarter. That's coast to coast, and that's a good call there and a timeout on the floor. Nice little run here. Seven to four lead in this third quarter for the GGs. Seven minutes left in this third quarter. Ottawa's back in this game. You're watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra and CBC Sports. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You have the power to inspire and impact the climate. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship is headed to the campus of Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, March 14th to the 17th. Tournament packages and single game tickets are on sale now. Click the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit gales.universitytickets.com to order your tickets today. The 24 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship in Kingston, Ontario. Chase the glory. And uh, the glory right now could be in the hands of Queens tonight as they want to chase the gold medal over Laval and come back to this tournament in a week's time as the national champions of men's basketball. Well, it's gonna be a tall task for Laval as well. On the other side, I mean, they've been asked to stop two elite scorers and Malcolm Christie and Diego Mafia. And now they're ha gonna have a brother act, two guys that can play offensively and defensively wreak havoc on both sides of the court in the gold medal game. Maye, Parker, double team, back door, we are, and this time he comes up Smelling like roses after the last time we missed an opener like that. Great reach around there as Noonan had to help Stajic on the mismatch there and just finds him on the backside. Nice little authoritative right hand bounce pass. Two point lead for the Dal, Dal Tigers. 0-2. Around Parker. Jump step. 
And Jock Tajori blazing his way up. Whistle. Foul. 6.19 left. Well, same, left the shot well, same baseline first. Stepped oh. out of bounds as he gave him a little bit of a hip check there. But GG's will continue to apply pressure. And they've beaten it every time. Right down the middle there. It's perfectly broken. And it looked like initially that there was contact before he went out of bounds. But uh, they go the way. And here's Maye with it. Christie back in the game. Watched by Steik. And here is Riar, and here is Parker, and there is no points. And back with it is Ottawa, and now they can tie or take the lead with the three. Spin move. Extra pass, 0-2 for the lead. Got it. Back up one, Ottawa. And that's tired legs at the end there, chasing around in the sophomore for Parker, who just has to kind of half trot out that way. But love to see some Maie and uh, Christie pick and roll situations. These guys can both handle the ball. Maie with it again. He uh, became the point forward after Gallagher went out against Laval. And now it is Husbands Brown who loses it. Long pass up ahead, deflected away by Christie. He knocks over Maie. Backdoor 0 2. And that went from Champagne basketball to two points here for the Gigi. And Gameta went about four rows up into the stands there before sprinting back across the timeline to settle in against Christie. It is Lidell Husbands Brown with it. Now back up three's Ottawa. Maye, Parker against Newton. Newton was caught frozen because he didn't go for the shot. And now here he is on the byline again. Four left on the shot clock. We are. That's his spot. And that's his shot. And now they're back to, to parody. And not so long. And Dr. Jory is on the run. And he plays through for a two-handed slam. And what would have just been three and then good settle in becomes a one-point differential in a two-point game. Cannot rest on your laurels, no matter how nice a shot you have. You know Ottawa's been pushing the pedal here. Intercepted. Gameta. 0-2. One dribble, back out, over to Newton. And now they're on a 5-0 run, up by four. How long does Rick Plato let out his youthful squad try and cipher this one out on the court? You see it back to the 2-3 zone. So it's going to sit very high, and then that entry pass, it'll start collapsing. Christie. He airmailed that towards Cape Breton. And now here is Stajek denied by Maye. And this will be Ottawa ball with 3.58 left on the clock. And Plato's signaling for a timeout. He'll get one to give his guys a rest. Timeout call on the court, 3.58 left. This is a 57-53 lead for Ottawa over Dalhousie in the third place game. You're watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra and CBC Sports. Welcome back here to St. Foy, Quebec. Uh, it's a winner bus for one of these teams in terms of a medal, and this is the last chance they can do so. It's been a compelling watch with these teams, how they've been going back and forth, oozing with intent, and now looking for that uh, ending of a medal around their necks in about a quarter and four minutes away. Well, GG's kicked it up into second gear to begin the se second half, a 16-9 advantage. Their shooting percentage back up towards 50%. They shot over 50% in that first quarter. They're now at 47% compared to 39 for the Tigers. Here is Kulamala with it. Almost picked off, is nearly picked off by Christy. Kulamala on the recovery, and Christy somehow gets it back into Lionel Husband's hands. And this has been utter chaos with the possession, and Maie back in the low block, and he will finish it off with a smooth envy. I was going to say, you took the words out of my mouth there, partner. Just frantic and then calm at the end on the two. Stajic, calm from Bank Street. And now they are back up by five. Seven three-pointer. He's now up to 14. Him and O2, the leading scores at 15 and 14, respectively. Tajora, 10. Maye back with it. 
Here's a sidecar pass and over to Lionel Husbands Brown. Chris is trying to work his way through. Maye with it. Six left on the shot clock. Maye against Newton. Pivoting, denied by the backboard, and the magic touch coming through for Stewart, and they're down by three. Well, that was a pair of possessions in a row where he didn't write it that way, but nonetheless, they got four points, and we're in a three-point game here. Stajic, eyeball to eyeball for three. E. Patrick, no. Rebound right to Lydell Husbands-Brown. Uh, see, he's, he's comfortable walking you down, and he'll play the pick and roll, too, but you just see him size him up there on unfortunate bounds. Caleb Stewart, around the protractor it goes, and here is Maye. On the cut is Christie. Crash, whistle, foul, 2.27 left. And Demay about to come back in for Dow. There's an over-pursuit there because they Christie's hurt him so many times on that catch-and-shoot release from the wing. They're trying to cheat over the screen in that situation and runs over the picker in that situation. Side out pass for Dalhousie. 14 left on the shot clock. 2.27 left on the game clock. And we're itching closer and closer to the gold medal game. I mean, they're going to reset this building after this. Drop everyone out for probably an hour, 75 minutes before they start filing in like mad people here that the snow is not going to keep anyone from getting into this building and seeing a potential RSEQ champion. If Claval does it, it would be the first time since 1998 that a team from Quebec has won the national title. Claval really handsy here the entire process. Stewart, four left in the shot clock. Husbands Brown. And that will be a violation that will go back to Ottawa. Good job by James Darun and his team, who are one of the elite defensive teams coming into this game. First in points allowed per game at 67, first in steals. First in opponent three-point opposition, though. They've been torched for 36% today, and you see the acrobatic finish go short there, just being asked to do a little too much in that possession. Newton with it, watched by Stewart. And Jock Jory. Watched by Caleb Stewart. He'll take him to the rim. And in. And the harm. And now a chance to put them up by six with 154 left in this third quarter. You see Cole Noonan saying, let's keep it rolling there with the pointer index finger rotating counterclockwise there. But good size up there. They isolate him on the left side. They overload the right. And then once he attacks the paint, just mistimed jump there. And he slips under side underneath and he earns one more the free throw is good they're now up by six with 154 left in this third quarter a re-rack might be required for Dalhousie they were up and now they're down by six. Oh, we, we saw this a couple times yesterday where there's just counter punches it's the fourth quarter for this Dalhousie team they've got secure and Gallic can help the cause and he misses it on that shot 135 now, left now being outscored 22 13 in this third quarter in the hand checking going to get called there and rightly so he's reaching out and extending at the end of the play too there for the freshman and Stewart. So be on the side out. Both teams not on the bonus yet. Uh, Dow at two team fouls and Ottawa at two team fouls in this game. Well the Tigers pretty good defensively as well in terms of personal fouls the game. They average 18 committed. That's second best in the AUS. 128 left in this third quarter and Jock Jory against Stewart. And a whistle, and that will be a foul. That will be non-shoot. And with 123 left, that will be Dow's 13th foul. First on Christie. Stack will go baseline as is for custom for them on this season. Caleb Stewart, the only one in foul trouble for the Tigers at three right now. And Jota Jory against Stewart. Whips that pass back out to Newton on the end line. Six left in the shot clock. Kulamala, back heel, rebound to May. Stajic might have got one too. He's checking his nose after that exchange underneath the rim. In Gala, watched by his former teammate Kulamala at Vandy College. And now he backs up, looking to really get going with a minute left in this third quarter play. Ten left in the shot clock for Dow. Here is DeMay. 
from the free throw line. And he's got it. He is a good looking player for this future Dalhousie team. Yeah, his first bucket of the game after starting 0 of 4, but nice little behind the back. Three the other way. Bullseye coming in from Newton. And that is Cole Newton from three. They're up by seven. Quietly had a good game. He's now up to seven off three of seven shooting. Brother Brock, four of nine for nine points, five rebounds. A seven point lead, 28 seconds left in this quarter of action. Dow down by seven there in red ink. Demay with it, watched by Syke. Cutting through is Christie, and he misses that rebound in Jock to Jory. Now they play for the last shot with 10 ticks left on the clock, and he will bring it back up court, and he will be shadowed by Stewart. Six left of the game clock. The jumper. And the rebound. Dow will be down seven. We're through three. We're 10 away from a bronze medal winner. And right now, Ottawa looking like they are closer than Dow is at this point in the game. Stay tuned here. You are watching from St. Foy, Quebec, the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visite the shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Ah, uh, it is gold medal Sunday in St. Foy in Edmonton. But first, at 6 p.m., CBC Sports is Canada's home for university sports as we present the gold medal game of the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Men's Basketball Final 8 tonight at 6 p.m. East. Catch all of the action from Quebec City only on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, U Sports on CBC, Chase the Glory. And see the bracket. We have two more to go. And one will be at the pinnacle of the men's basketball season. That's going to be a contrast of styles, to say the least. Two elite scores and a pair of brothers, an elite defensively versus the two big men that wrecked havoc on the Dalhousie Tigers. Also coupled by a couple of guards who are quick in transition. They're handsy technicians defensively. It's going to be a fantastic four quarters here in Laval. We are we now will uh, inbound the ball and they have to do some magical stuff here. Can they mastermind a comeback down by seven with ten to go in this ball game? And uh, Dalhousie has been here before in terms of being in deficits, and here they are. Could a team that Rick Plato thought would have been a top five team come back with a top five finish? And Christie with the top five technique on that shot, and they're down by four. Well, he's up to 28 now. Remember, they got outscored 25 to nine in the fourth quarter yesterday, 25-15 here in the third. So. They got to flip the script here. They got to be over aggressive. And Dr. Jore, whistle. We are, will be called for the foul. Non shoot coming up here for Ottawa. I'd say that's a little too aggressive for my liking, but it'll prevent the easy basket in the lane. So, first foul distributed in 27 seconds. Just, you can't be over zealous in your approach in which you can put them in the bonus. Oh, what a move by Newton as he had two Tigers standing watching him go by them on that finish. That's an all-Canadian move and now he's up to double figures at 11. Back up six. Parker denied by Newton. And here comes Brock Newton up ahead towards Cole Newton. Coming through and Jock Jory. Ottawa looking to get themselves a medal. They did have a couple of silvers, a bronze, never a gold. And, and Jock Jory is going to reaffirm their stance on getting that bronze south of seven. You know, that long crossover is playing with Rear's mind in that case, in which direction he's going to pull. And you see Koldai already pointing out the offensive set here on the dribble exchange. Rather south of nine, 8.45 left in this ball game. Christy. Over, and he is fouled, and now for the third time today, 
He will get a trio of free throws coming up. Well, you want to watch the set from the beginning there because Cole Newton's pointing out exactly what's going to happen. They switch Christie over to the wing. You see the little tactician play, the fake handoff, and then backdoor for two there. Just like the backyard basketball they probably played together growing up. But you see Christie go onto the wing, and then you see the tough finish by the GGs in the paint here. Something that plagued the Tigers in their semifinal loss. But Christie now four times, I believe, if we're not mistaken, from the three-point line has been fouled. And so they set it up on the wing, and then they free him up right in the center of the lane off the double screen. And the follow-through just, again, too late. And they stop the clock, and he goes back for his 11th and 12th trips. And he hits on that one, 70-65 lead. And outside of my big mouth talking, he's 12 of 13 from the line now in a game high 30. He would have been 13 of 13. And now here's Newton with it. Brock against Stewart. Going to the left, kick out, and Jock Jory. Parker cuts him off at the valve. And that is going to be rebounded by Angala. 8-19 left in this ballgame. And so they start pushing the pace again like they did in the first quarter. And they are pacing their way through. And that is not going to help the cause. And that is recovered by the Gigi's. And here they come the other way with Newton on the gallop. There's Tajori just coming in on the defensive side, stopping the transition game one way. Kulamala jumper. Sweet. And now they're back up seven. Good looking shot by him. And that's his first basket of the game. Started 0 of 3 before that. My eight. The same action they ran for Christie last time. Now they'll do the double pick. Stewart. Here is the post play, and that will go out of play. Repelled by Kuamala, intended for Maye, with seven left on the shot clock. And now the big back Stike along with Gameta. They decided just to run the run screen, and we're looking for Parker to get to work in the block there. But the tip out will force a baseline possession with seven in Maye, right by that CBC logo. On the end line is for the Tigers. They have the ball. They're down by a touchdown with 7.39 left. Christie loading, shooting, and that might have been altered by Gametta. And now it is a fight for the ball inside the abyss. And now Gametta gets it back on the tippy-toe on the sideline. One-on-one, -on -one, losing the handle, and he will be called for a travel. He doesn't like that because he's trying to find the outlet on the wing there in Tajori. But... You see the other side, they did this a couple times last night in their semifinal loss where it's just a quick hitter to the pocket corner for Christie. Sunk the first, missed the other one. This time, because of the scouting report, knew he was going to get a guy in the air, just couldn't follow through on the wing. Here is Maye with it. Now trying to get himself through. And Gala, around one. The jumper is off the heel. Rebounded by Gametta, and now Stajak back on control. Now Stajak just grabbing the jersey of the Tigers there as he was being controlled, trying to fight over the screen defensively. Stajak, look at the muscle. And he could have come up with the goods. Rebounded by Gala. Really displaced by A, though, underneath the paint there, surprisingly. And now Gala trying to direct traffic. Bronze medal on the line, 6.42 left in this ball game. Stewart. And Gallo on the turn. And now trying to figure out what his options are. He will take option A. And Stewart cannot finish at the lip of the cup and recover by Newton. That's going to challenge by Brock on this case as no brain. Cole brings it back across the timeline. And with 6.21 left here, seven point lead. And here is Njok Tajore. That put back dunk. And the stare down of Parker. Welcome to U Sports Madness. And there's the duck we've been waiting for. And they'll go to the too high here. And then they'll set up their shooters in the pocket core in Maya and Christie. And Gala slicing. And now it goes back to Ottawa the other way. That was emphatic on the putback there. And here is Gameta's jumper. And that is sweet. And now they're up by 11, and you have to wonder now if Dallas starts to run out of fume, run out of gas, and on fumes the final 538 left. Well, a substitution coming here, and it's been an even fourth quarter so far, but a run here by the GGs after Dalhousie came out to a blistering start. It's now 10-6 lead for the GGs. Oh, caught two minds, Maya, and the mental fatigue might be setting in now for Dalhousie, and uh, for the. Tigers, they are lacking the bite that they've had in, on Friday and for the most part against Laval. 
And what is their options moving forward? Well, they can't turn it over one because they kill you on that. They had 16 force for 24 points. Today, 12 force turnover, 17 points. Timeout call on the court. 528 left. Ottawa 76, Dallas 65. You are watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Men's Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back here. Uh, we are in the final five and a half or so left in this ball game. And now, Greg, this uh, Dow team is going to have to come up with something magical, something stunning to get themselves back in because they're down by 11. And Ottawa looks like they are the fresher team amongst the two. Well, they are attacking the paint correctly early and often. They've gone 14 of 18 from the line. So you want to try and get back to that spot if you're them and stop the clock in any situation. But the turnovers, as I've mentioned, been huge. And Christie, who's got 31, has been sensational. But still, no other player for the Tigers in double figures. And that's a, that's a problem for Dalhousie. I mean, the GGs have four led by Tajori with 17. That is what you call uh, parody scoring right now. And here is a three. And that is not what they wanted. That lacked anything coming from the hands of Gameta. Yeah, so that one two, two switch look there works the first time and that goes off of Christie that goes back to Ottawa and now the margins are starting to tighten on Dalhousie with 504 left in this ball game well that was the first mistake there and I said that you couldn't do that here and every possession matters with half of a quarter left to go in each of their respective seasons Stoyak and he's now in control he's had a wonderful game Newton Firing a pass through, and Brock Newton is fouled by Parker, and he will be on the foul line. Because of the bonus situation bonus now. Situation now, exactly. And it's Christie initially that gets beat off the cheat there and tried to go for broke, and then Newton's able to get his hands on it and goes to the line. As mentioned, a disparity in the free throw shooting attempts. But they're now five of eight are the GGs. Well, sorry, part it isn't bonus right now. Uh, to apologize to those watching, Dal has two team fouls. Ottawa has one. So they'll say it was a catch and shoot in that situation. Yeah. So with that, 4:50 left here. It's now 13 point lead for Ottawa. They are having two fingers on the bronze medal, and here is Maye trying to take those fingers off the medal, and that won't help. And Parker will help, and they are now down. And oh my. Will it be before the basket counts or after uh, after the shot and then went in, did he extend when the ball was considered neutral or in possession of the GGs? Parker would take the foul and the two, but we'll see what the call is. So the two counts. counts yep. And then it's a push when the ball is considered neutral at this point because of the timing of the foul here. We'll put it in line possession. And now with that. It is an 11-point lead for Ottawa over Dalhousie. UBC is the site of next year's Nationals, and these teams will love to be back in Vancouver for the men's edition. Ottawa in control of the narrative, and now look to put this game away. And Dr. Jory will do that with a three, and now they're up by a score of 81-67, 4.15 left in this ballgame. Both sides now 36% and an identical 9 of 25 from the land beyond. Maye. Great game by him, by the way. 20 points. Stolen. Gameta, two on one. And pushed out by Lydell Husbands Brown. And this goes back over to Ottawa. And you see Ottawa, the, the, the sense of smiles against being the coach Buckley of Ottawa. He said these guys were relaxed, locked in, and now here they are. 
403 away from a bronze medal. Kevin Oto is going to check back into the game. Nice afternoon for him, too. Him and Newton at 15 apiece. Oto 6 and 9 from the field, including three three pointers. Newton 15 and 8 rebounds. And then you look at Steik. What a game by him. 14 points, 6 rebounds, 8 assists. I would argue, partner, he's amongst him and Newton potential uh, all stars for this tournament. Time out call 403 left in this ball game. You are watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC Sports. Welcome back here to Laval University. St. Foy, Quebec to be exact, on the outskirts of Quebec City. About a 15 minute drive from downtown Quebec City where the teams are seen right now. And uh, they will all depart in the next 24 hours back to their homes and uh, back to campuses and get ready for the remainder of their academic uh, session that they have left over. It's already March, eh? School's done for universities early April, I believe. Yeah, and I mean, some of the high schools across Canada on their March break right now as well, so they get to tune in or come in person for basketball. Oto is tuned in, and he can't get that as that's tuned out. And back Oto Maye, and 3.55 left in this ballgame. We're in the thick end of the final four minutes of this matchup, and for Dalhousie, they have their work cut out. Christie cannot get that in. Stewart, save, right back to Maye from the 45. Off the iron, and this will go right to Newton, and they will calm things down as they are now in control with 3.33 left in this match. Good find by Stiak as he looks back over to Ruin to see what they're going to do in their half-court set here. Stiak, jab step, back door, Newton, sumptuous. Playmaker, one-on-one, -on -one, that's what he is. He's a five-tool player. He, he can do it all. Defensively, he's an asset, elite as a facilitator, and when called upon to score, he is more than comfortable taking that role. Parker from the center arc. Here's Maye for three. And you can start feeling now, partner, that uh, the Dow Tigers are starting to run out of gas in their tanks. Well, they're realizing it's threes that are going to get them back into this game. They're now dipping to 32%, 9 of 28 you see the legs not under them on those attempts either. No, and uh, not seeing that there's an error resonation right now for Rick Plato, but he's going to bring back his ace in his back pocket in, in Genio and Gala. And uh, perhaps this could be his last game. He could come back, but we don't know yet what his intentions are going to be next year. Well, you see the fourth quarter yesterday playing the Tigers. They got outscored 25-9, and then the second half so far, here they're outscored 42-23, including 17-8 in the fourth quarter so far. 0-2. Brock Newton and Jock Chidori could be the player of the game. And he misses that rebound by Maye. 2.32 left in this matchup. Maye speeding up ahead. Steig will be called for the foul in transition. And that will be the second team foul on Ottawa. And it'll be his second personal as well. And Stiak was on the wrong end of a couple calls in his mind in that semifinal yesterday. But a good response here by the team from the nation's capital in the bronze medal matchup. It looks like Rick Plato is going to take it on a timeout. So time I call by Rick Plato with 2.29 left in this matchup. And it's really not much here. It's route one here for this team. They have to come up with the, with the points. And they're down by 16. And very little time left. Well, you just see there the kick and the drive and then the kick out for the two in transition. And it's been the facilitation and the distribution in terms of assists. They've got 18 as a team now here. And it's been scoring by committee. It's been unselfish basketball. They've got four players with 14 or more, led by Tajori with 20. So 
Doesn't matter whose number's been called this afternoon, someone's been taking their fair share of shots, and all the guys with 14 or more have made six or more shots from the field so far. And with that, it is a 16-point lead for Ottawa over Dalhousie. Our next game will be the gold meta matchup coming up here, and uh, Greg, that's the one everyone is going to have their eyes on tonight at 6 p.m. East. I mean, it's going to be a sold-out building one. We've heard that from multiple people walking around here as they'll empty the gymnasium after the session and reset for that 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time kickoff here on CBC Sports. But like I said, it's going to be very, very intriguing. A team that knocked off the number one team in the tournament and have followed that up beautifully with a fourth quarter monstrous one from their two bigs. And it's going to be rotation guys who steps in, who's able to play those critical moves moments can you handle the nerves of the home crowd and on the flip side can cinderella keep the storyline going here and have their own nerves caught playing in front of the most raucous crowd of the season for them and gallop now with 220 left they have to move and get some shots on net and husbands brown is short to put back right there and they get two back from the 16 that they're down He's up to five points now, two of four from the field to go along with four rebounds, but they keep bre breaking the press here. Stajek trying to find the open space. Play keep away. Newton and Jock Tajori fouled by Angela with nine left in the shot clock. They're just chasing at this point because they're selling out for the steal and then good read there by Cole Newton initially who will go on the inbound looking for the whip pass into the center lane there. Leave Tajore up top and just a simple lob in. Newton, kill shot, no. Rebound and Gala. Still a lifeline here for the Tigers, down by 13 or 14. And that will not be the case. And that is recovered by Newton. And now here comes Brock Newton the other way. The Gigi's are now 140 away from a bronze medal. Kind of just formalities at this point, partner. 0 2. Foul, charge. Other way we go. Can't leave your feet at the end of the day when you're making a pass like that and then kick out the one arm as you're making that pass. And so the lifeline extended a little more here with 92 seconds to go. You'll see them go into the press potentially to just slow down the ball movement. But if you're Dalhousie, you let that ball roll as far as you can without touching it. And now they'll play the uh, delay of starting the clock here. And Gallo will have 90 seconds now to pull off the ultimate smash and grab against the Ottawa GGs, which right now is not looking too good. And that will help. They're down by 12. Step one complete. Six more steps. And just can't allow the home run shot there on the press break. So good job keeping everything in front of them initially here. It will be Ottawa ball, 123 left. Because of the kick there, though, the shot clock resets back to 24. You see Maia showing him the corner so they can try and trap. Newton. Shot clock took a while to get going, actually. And this will be a foul as Maia got hit in the face with that insult to injury. Not right. what they wanted. No, he thought he was going to get the foul called for the offensive there. And instead, Cold Newton will have the slow walk. But you see him work the baseline there. A hand check. Well, he grabbed the nose a little late, but the exchange happened earlier. Yeah, the basketball the hit his face, it looked like. And now it is going to be Cole Newton, who is only a 33% free throw shooter, and he's 100% on that shot. And now putting this game even more in favor of the GGs. See, you mentioned a number, and it goes in. I say something, and it's a mess. See? Right again. I didn't say anything. I just said it was 100% before that. And Gala up. And in for two, and now they're down by 11 again. Still have to work, has some work to do here. Just there's a good read, right? Flash. And Josh Dore, bronze medal, is now heading towards Ottawa with 106 left in this ball game. Excellent flash, and then a good stretch outlet by Stajic there. And Gala, Christie, deflected back out to Gala from the corner pocket. My ace three, splash. Down by 10, 53 ticks left. Eight points now on their 10th three-pointer as a team. A long ball up ahead, 0-2. Looking over to Maie, and, and Gala will save it back over to Maie. 40 seconds left. This is now do or die for Dalhousie. And Liddell Husband-Brown gets that through. 
And now this will be an eight point eight three seven seconds left. And keep everything in front of you. And they get actually bailed out by Newton Wayne for the ball there because Oto was open for a split second. So again, they're going to show that corner and try and double early. And the first flash might come through, but then a secondary option has to be available. Newton will great spin break out of that. The press and and Jock Tadori will not kill off the game yet. And now he will go to the free throw line with 28.9 left in this ballgame. That's high basketball IQ by Cole Newton there, knowing the devil is coming. And what does he do? He just turns the opposite way and tight ropes the sideline there and pushes it up court. And now free throws for Ottawa and for O2. He will go out with the bronze medal. Good day for him. Kevin Otu finishes 6 of 10, three three pointers, 15 points, seven rebounds, and two assists. And you see the embrace he's getting from the coaching staff. And I mean, he's meant so much to this program. A fifth year senior is going to go out on a high. And he will have a bronze medal. They will have a nice, not two hour bus ride, because I think we're in Montreal or in Quebec City. A nice five hour bus ride back to Ottawa with a medal around the neck. You see him getting carried over to the end of the bench by his teammates. Good meta, using a little bit of uh, squats over there. Yeah, the sophomore's been uh, putting work in the weight room, to say the least. What does it say about Odu? Well, I mean, maybe he's squatting him for a couple reps. Wow, big exchange there. And that is a collision of bodies, and Stajic is hurt slowly, and this is going to... Uh, the room's not happy about something, and now the game... Is over. Here's the highlight, and oof, that was a massive uh, pick coming through of the play by Lydell Husbands Brown. He's giving it to the players right now because he's saying, "You guys should know better. This game's over at this point. There was no need to lay into him on the screen." And it's a tack on Daru, and he's going to be kicked out of the game. So the concern now is Stike, who uh, took a severe shot. And uh, right now is. Uh, the celebrations will be delayed and good for Stajic to get on his feet. But again, that was a massive pick he took from Rydell Husbands Brown. Yeah, I'd love to see that one more time if possible. Stajic's have a, a great afternoon, 14 points, 7 rebounds, and 10 assists. Again, he, he, he does everything for this team, as I've mentioned multiple times. But the officials pointed that Daruin was supposed to get out of the building when he assessed him the technical in this situation. And then the question becomes, I would guess here, because the tournament's done, does he get to stay theoretically for the trophy, for the medal presentation, or think he does he have to leave at the end of the day? I don't think he's been. And here's a replay of the pick right now. Here we go. Stack not looking, not looking. And that is a big part. That was a Parker, Jaden Parker. I apologize. Uh, he didn't 11. extend. That was the thing, and I'll give him that. I think it's just where he held that screen right by his chest area and. Stajic using momentum against him the wrong way. I, I didn't see any extension on the screen. Yeah. But I can see Daruin's point in this in the sense of, okay, you're up by 10. We're putting a little pressure, but there's no need for you to free it up. You're a high level enough basketball player kind of just to walk across the timeline at this point. That was a massive hit. Uh, Parker on Stajic. And um, sophomore's getting a lot of attention for the wrong reasons here at the end. And a lot of discussion going on about, I mean, to be frank, it's a 10-point game. It's 26 seconds to go. I and mean, just stick by the decision you're going to make at this point. It's it's becoming a little uh, tiresome. And Darun's still there. And he is beaming with uh, fury eyes. And he's not, he's locked in the referees. He's not taking his eyes off the referees. And now you see Parker uh, giving a, an apology towards the Ottawa team bench and towards Darun about that play. Unintentional. Yeah, he wanted to go over to Stajic, too, who's on the sideline there. He's just grimacing. And James Darun, despite uh, claiming a bronze medal, will have the lonely walk across the uh, Tigers bench. And his fifth bit steps will go up. Free throws here for Ngala. 26.4 left. And this will be a little bit closer. But again, uh, not enough for the Tigers to get back in this game. He'll be the third player in double figures now. Parker, the other one at 10. Nagala is at 10 now. Christie, another brilliant performance. 31 points, five three-pointers. But 
back-to-back -back nights. He goes 25 and 31, and they're in losing efforts. So coming to the game now is Marco Tulio. And he got some uh, minutes in last night's semifinal. Freshman average, 5.4 points per game on the season. On a freshman stash, he's rocking there, though. Yeah. Eight point lead, 26.4. And they'll need a few uh, glitches from Ottawa. But uh, right now, it will be Dow Ball, or now it will be Ottawa possession of the free throws coming up here for O2, who actually had to leave the game and now come back in. So you make a cameo. That's a first. Uh, outgoing senior back in the game, unfortunately, due to the circumstances with Stiak getting hurt. Well, and an unfortunate thing for Stiak, he's being helped to the back area there. So I I'm really wondering what happened, whether he's got the wind knocked out of him. If uh, flash. He has something going on there because he he's getting a lot of attention in the back right now. So it would be Ottawa ball, and uh, they are in all likelihood hoping to kill off the game unless Dow wants to play it out again. And uh, here is the side off for Newton. Finding Brock Newton. And Josh Adore, Marco Tulio on him. And this is coming off seconds here and nowhere to go. And finding his way through is to Dalhousie on a four on two. And get away with the travel there. 13 left on the sh shot clock. And that is going to be a foul. And that will be three free throws coming, here, coming up here for Ingala. 11.2 left in the matchup. That would have been really interesting if you got that shot off to go and for one more, but clock stops. So again, we talk about it being formalities at this point, but still a couple of possessions to play out here and what was a good Ottawa lead in the fourth quarter is now dwindled to two-point differential, 23-21 here in the fourth quarter, pending the free throws. Down by eight, 11.2 left. So it's still a three-score lead with 11 seconds left, and uh, they need not a prayer but a miracle at this point and that will make it a seven point lead my little overzealous thinking it was two instead of the third one six point lead 11.2 left and josh adore is going to be fouled by lydell husbands brown and he will go to the line with 9.9 .9 left and one more free throw will make it a three score game and that will ice this game away well, a good job by the officiating crew, uh, giving them there about a half second to determine if there was going to be a play on the ball. They didn't have it, and so respect to both sides in the sense of that they get the call done quickly because that's what the Tigers want to happen is if they can't force the strip. And that will do it right there. Three score lead, 9.9 .9 left. Ottawa will be your bronze medal winners on this Sunday afternoon as we move towards gold medal Sunday at 6 p.m. East. 3 p.m. West. And now, one last roll of dice for the Tigers. Marco Tulio missing the three. And there is 3.3 left, and they will call off the Tigers. Unselfish. Oh, Tigers ball still. Unselfish play by my though. They'll give it to the young man. Christy. And that is it. Bronze will be the color of choice for Ottawa. They win it over Dalhousie. 91-83, and will finish third place at the Nationals this season. A big third quarter, 25-15. They outscored the Dalhousie Tigers. They end up shooting 48% from the field. And, I mean, we talked about the turnovers being a point of concern. They forced 15 to the tune of 19 points, and they control the glass, out-rebounding them by 10, 45-35. But it's just distribution by scoring. DeJore actually ends up with a nice little game himself. 26 points and nine rebounds. And Kulamon and Gala embracing former Vanny teammates. And now the handshake line. And we'll have the player of the game here from St. Foix, Quebec. As now Dal and Ottawa have completed their seasons. And we're now down to the final two of this campaign, which is the gold medal game between Laval and Queens. Here from St. Foix, Quebec. And Darun back in as he makes his way back in and uh, and Gal getting a couple of nice words from the Ottawa staff. Uh, Darun and Plato were having a great conversation before the start of the game for about, I'd say a good 12-ish, 14 minutes on the game clock there and 
See, Darun's all smiles at the end of the day. A lot of respect between these two sides and the coaching staff and good effort by both teams in this bronze medal game. Quality basketball across the board. And the handshake line will now lead. And uh, for a guy like Maillet, uh, unfortunately, the end of the road it might be here for him as a Dalhousie Tiger. And it's tough for a lot of these guys because they know that this is it. This is the last of the high level of competition that they'll play before they pursue their post basketball career moving forward. Well, I mean, you spend so much time with these guys. I mean, from the dorm days to the long practices. Let's go to Mark Antoine Garapi with the player of the game. Le joueur du match du côté des Tigers de Dalhousie, the player of the game for Dalhousie, le numéro 6, number 6, Malcolm Christie. Et le joueur du match du côté des GGs, the player of the game for Ottawa, le numéro 5, number 5, Dragon Saic. And there you have it, player of the games right now. Final thoughts of this game, uh, Greg? Well, someone's got to go grab his award. It's a former uh, player in the year, Mike Lafriquette, who will accept it for them. But final thoughts, I mean, it's the distribution of scoring hey, for the GGs, GGs that's, that's the difference at the end of the day. They control the glass, they control GGs the turnover win. battle. And usually when you do two of those three things at least, or those two in particular, that when you most postseason matchups. And now the bronze medal being acknowledged right now by Laval. And you saw the point of emphasis as you look at the replays here. They went inside out, old school basketball. Focus on the inside, kick you out for the three. And I wouldn't be surprised at the end of the day when they look at these tournament all-star selections. Brock Newton Mais should be amongst some 15 and 7, and then Stajic had 14, 7, and 10 assists in a winning effort. I mean, those two, for me at least, should be on the All Star selection given what they've done over three games this weekend. Well, that'll do for us here. We're done two. We have one more to go. The gold medal game at 6 p.m. East, 3 p.m. Pacific. Stay tuned for that. We'll speak to you soon. Ottawa are your bronze medal winners. We'll talk in a couple hours now here in the 2024 Sports Fans Final. Of the presented by Michelob Ultra. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo.